before we get started, I just wanted to show you some stats. Uh, this build has a pretty much a 92% chance to crit with all the charges and all that kind of crap. And also the damage per second is uh, oh, pretty much consistently over 200,000 once everything is going. Hey guys, I'm Mike Lotta and I'm going to show you a Hegemi's era build, uh, staff build. And uh, this is going to go into the map first. I'll explain uh, all the shit I did with the build a little bit later. The map's not that bad. Uh, so, like, it's a high-ish tier, so it should be pretty good. We're still in the Breach League. Uh, this is one of the last characters I made. I didn't quite finish it all the way. Um, because I got bored of the League a little bit after. I should probably also, uh, activate some shit. And as you can see here, pretty good shit. Does a lot of damage, generates a lot of power charges, and a lot of charges in general. Uh, if you if you just want to see what the, I did to do the build, uh, you can just look at the description. I'll have like a time index there when I start explaining it, but I'm going to finish this map all the way to see if it's something... You know, you can just watch me complete the map and see if it's something that you're really into. Um, anyways, this this is a funny story about how this build came to be. Uh, it started with a Starforge, believe it or not. And I know it's kind of weird, uh, but that's how everything starts, I'm sure, in, in Path of Exile. Anyways, my friend Pat dropped a nice... Um, well, no, he got it. He found a Starforge, and Starforges are worth a fair amount. Uh, like, I don't know, a couple of exalts every league, and we're like, hey, you know, this is our chance to try and make a Starforge build, or we sell it. And we're like, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna try and make a Starforge build. Um, and if you don't know what the Starforge is, it's basically like a, um, it's a sword that does all physical damage, cannot do elemental damage. Um, by the way, the Starforge sucks. I don't know why anyone likes it. Uh, well, I'm, I don't know. Like, uh, we tried a couple builds, like, we did basically two separate builds. And, um, I, they both kind of didn't work, and I, I kind of don't want to do Elrion's quest, so we're just going to leave him. Because I don't need, El my Elrion's already level 8, so it doesn't matter. Um, anyways, we started it out, and it was, like, basically, like, uh, okay, like, I, I, I don't get, I don't get why, what's the deal with the Starforge. It doesn't, it just does mediocre damage, like, it, the whole point is that you don't have to run Hatred and, uh, like Herald of Ash with a high physical damage sword because it can't deal any uh, ele any elemental damage. Um, anyways, uh, yeah. So the, the, we didn't like the sword, but the thing. Oh, why did I even pick that up? Um, the thing that we did not like about it, it just didn't do enough damage. It felt. But while leveling it, we tried Wild Strike because uh, we were doing like basically physical sword, right? And so we're like, what abilities can we use to like level this so we can actually? Because it's like a fucking like level sixty nine sword or something. And we tried Wild Strike, and we're like, wow, Wild Strike is actually really fun. Um, and so that spawned an Inquisitor build that was uh, meant to, well, like, that was meant to do Wild Strike for me, and I used Hegemi's Era, and that's how I kind of worked it out. And um, I did that, and then I was like, oh, okay. Uh, this guy's hurting my ass. I might die. Shit. Okay, let me go get some more fucking charges. Actually, I, I don't have a choice here. This guy hurts a lot. All right, I got I, I got him anyways. Um. So yeah, uh, we did Wild Strike, and I did it with Hegemi's Era, and uh, it didn't work out. Um, and I'll explain. I'll, I'll explain why it didn't work out Wild Strike. Uh, but I ended up basically doing a Sunder build instead with Hegemi's Era. Um, by the way, a lot of skills do work. This is just my favorite one. Uh, you can do this with Sweep, you can do this with uh, what's the other one? Ground Slam, or you can do this with. Uh, I think those are the three best, to be honest. It's, it's one of these three. Uh, sweep, Hedge, uh, sorry, Sweep, um, Sweep, Sunder, or Ground Slam. Either one. Uh, all of them are, all of them are excellent. Anyways, uh, so, uh, it, Inquisitor did not work with Hedgemi's Era, and then we got a six link, Hedgemi's Era, so it's like, well, you know, we got it, we, I, I think there's an even better build I could do with it, maybe, and then, like, yeah, so basically... Sto moral of the story is, uh, if you want to make a good build, it's going to take you three builds at least. Um, so good, good fucking times. Um, I, honestly, this is this one's actually kind of fun. Um, is it hardcore viable? Maybe you'd have to make a couple changes. I'm playing this in the softcore league for uh, for this uh, thing, and I I ran out of fucking endurance charges. Uh, sorry, yeah, frenzy charges, because uh, I use uh, the blood rage over here to keep my. Uh, Okay, we got we missed about 20 monsters because they clear like an asshole, but it's fine. You know what? You get the idea. All right, that is the build, and I will now show you the um, some of the stuff here. 
um, that I have for the tree. So uh, my my skill of uh, my passive tree of choice or whatever, or ascendancy, sorry, ended up being Berserker uh, for the increased attack speed, movement speed, 40% uh, more damage, obviously, that's so great. Um, I originally did Pain Reaver into Cloak to, uh, into Savagery, and I'll explain a little bit like about this is, um, we did, uh, I, I like the leech because this is like so, this is so much sustain, so good. Uh, this is also pretty good, however, that 100% leech uh, as life, if you take it a Savage hit, is really good, but not if you're not Vault Pact. You absolutely need Vault Pact for this node to be really good. It's still good, but not really good. Um... Because that 100% damage leech to life is like, yeah, if you if you get it back immediately, then you can tank through anything. So I wasn't able to make it all the way to Vault Pact, but actually, like, I would suggest it, honestly, in, in a lot of cases, maybe, if you want to... If you can work this node in, I couldn't do that in this build, but... Because I had to go around for power charges. Um, but yeah, we have Rite of Ruin here instead, which means I got to save a few points going into Unwavering Stance. Because uh, this gives you cannot be stunned if you've killed recently and also a bit of attack speed and reduced damage and stuff I, I this was actually the better choice to cloaked in savagery. I realized I had to respect into this guy again um, What did I do for bandits? Uh, I think it's passive tree passive What's the fucking What's the oh passives? Uh, so I did um, I don't know what I did on this character Okay, I, I forgot how to tell this, but I, I think I did life, physical damage, and then power charge. Uh, just off the top of my head, that's what I think I did. Anyways, uh, just before I go more into the passage tree, I'll show you the items. Uh, so here we have uh, Hedgeby's Era. Um, it's a pretty, sort of, it's an interesting item. It's actually really cheap right now. Um, every build I like to do in leagues, I like to do something that's kind of like off the meta. And this is the one I chose. The Hedgeby's Era in this league is actually pretty cheap, all things considered. It was more expensive when it came out, obviously. Uh, it's got it's a basically physical damage staff uh, that gives you power charges when you knock back an enemy with melee damage. Uh, pretty important, pretty important shit. You get plus one to power charges, uh, some critical strike chance, and a lot of block actually. All things considered, uh, I use combs just for the center uh, chest piece, and I also use abyssus, uh, which gives you a great deal of critical strike multiplier. Um, it's on the higher end, and the phys increased physical damage taken is a mid roll. And I also managed to actually roll uh, sweep damage on this, but I just like Sunder better, so uh, deal with it. Uh, we also add a little bit of physical damage to this guy. Um, I use uh, Humokama's Sight on X Amulet. I use this to fix my accuracy problems, because I have major accuracy problems, and I cannot take uh, Resolute Technique. Absolutely not. So, I mean, if you get, like, perfect gear, and you can maybe fix this with, like, having, like, your rings rolled with accuracy and stuff... Um, it's it's entirely possible, but I just I did not do that for myself this this league. Uh, that's that's what I did. Um, I use the I just had some have some boots with decent resists. This is not the highest end gear that you can possibly have. Uh, it's just something I put together with shit I had lying around. So oh, I use Empire's Grasp because it makes uh, knockback far less annoying. Because if you do it any other way, then the knockback, uh, obviously it's knocking it back from you, because you're trying to do knockbacks all the time. I don't know if this is absolutely necessary, but you may find it's actually a very good quality of life thing to bring everything to you, rather than away out of range of your abilities. Um, and also, socketed gems are supported by level 10 knockback, and it gives you a lot of armor. And I use the Ancestral Protector, Faster Attacks, Fortify, and uh, Leap Slam. Just so I can, like, Leap Slam around, and Ancestral Protector gives me, I think this is the variant with the... Um, uh, this is more attack speed, I did. I should also show you the DPS, shouldn't I? Uh, yeah, I should do that, shouldn't I? When I get it going. Uh, but I'll do that in a minute. Uh, oh, well, actually, I'll just paste in the beginning of the video, that's what I'll do. Um, so, the rings are okay, um, as well. Like, they're not the best top tier you could have. But it does a crap ton of damage. I use uh, Rumi's Concoction and uh, Azir's Promise and some other stuff for defensive means. Um, so, the one downside of this build is that uh, physical damage really fucking hurts. Um, I got a Combs here and I still feel I don't have enough life. And I'll show you the tree in a moment. Let's go show you the rest of my uh, gems here. We got Cast on Damage, Increased Duration, Summon Ice Golem, and Immortal Call. Uh, that's how I managed I did a high level Immortal Call, which was probably... Actually, no, it's actually pretty good because... I'll show you. We actually do generate endurance charges with this build, and I'll show you how. 
Uh, we also have Blood Rage, Hatred, Rallying Cry. I love Rallying Cry so much. I think it's like the best War Cry if you don't need Endurance Charges. And you're doing direct damage, you know, stuff like that. And Herald of Ash. Uh, and my actual links here is, uh, where's, um... Here's Sunder. We have Sunder uh, with uh, increased critical strikes. We actually got like a level... We got like a 20 quality one. Uh, added fire damage. Melee physical support. Faster attacks and multi-strike. So that's how we did that one. Uh, so that's pretty much it for my links. Um, as for the passive tree, uh, passive tree is pretty simple. Um, I try. I had to get accuracy where I could because uh, accuracy, as I said, is a huge issue with this build. Um, I close this guy. I don't know why I went for both of these actually. Oh, I was trying to offset actually the blood rage cost, but I probably don't need both, and I probably should decide on one. And I don't know which one it would be because they're both really nice actually. Because I need life and I need the other thing. Because this only gives five percent life, so. I don't know. I just like the regen. <laughs> it's like eight, zero point eight percent regen, man. It's it's nice. Um, I I did this, I think, to temporarily fix my yeah. I did to fix my dexterity problems temporarily. Uh, so that's I did this temporarily, just band aid resist, I think, but mostly dexterity. I think I was planning on getting a piece of gear to to fix that up. Um, dexterity is also a problem. Uh, this this group of nodes here for critical strikes, very nice. I love this one. Uh, and now we're going to talk a little bit about the synergy with Hegemies and some of these staff nodes. Uh, we have 20% increased physical damage, whatever, whatever. 10% chance to gain endurance charge on melee critical strike. And you're going to be critting like crazy with this build. Uh, it's actually really good for that. And then we also have Whirling Barrier, which is a 10% chance to gain a power charge when you block 6% additional power, power uh, block chance with staffs. I figured, you know what, it's like two physical damage nodes and then one uh, one additional one where it can give you more uh, power charges and it can also give you more block. I figured this is actually a pretty nice one to pick up. Uh, I mean, I used it more at a time when I had trouble generating charges. And uh, it's like, it's, it's, actually, it's actually pretty good, I would say. Uh, you don't have to get this one, I would say. You can skip these three if you don't think so. Uh, I get Endurance Charge, Endurance Charge, then Power Charge, and also Power Charge up here. I get Life where I can, and then also these two nodes are fucking required as well right here. So, Critical Strike Chance with Staffs, 50%. Uh, knock, back, uh, knock back enemies if you get a Critical Strike with Staff. Very important, because uh, the thing with the Hedgemies is that it doesn't have any innate knockback. You, de you either have to use an ability which has knockback, or you use this node, uh, which is... it. Gives you knockback whenever you get a crit, and guess what? You crit a lot with this staff, so this basically guarantees your power charges all the time. And this one over here is just a more multiplier and critical strike. It's actually just insane the amount of staff crits that uh, nodes here. These are acquired, and since you're already up in this area, you might as well get the last power charge here. Uh, and that's basically it. And then uh, for the rest of the build, I got some berserking and life. Um, and that's that's the way it went. Uh, I mean. This and elemental damage might be good because you actually do a fair bit of elemental damage with this. Uh, I mean, not actually as much as I would have thought. Fire damage. What's the cold? Oh no, cold damage is a little bit lower. I mean, it's still a lot of uh, damage, and the DPS is pretty high. Uh, but as I said, it is a critting build, and it actually is a very nice critting build. Now you may uh, question the choice of using increased critical strikes. Well, this puts my crit chance up to where is it at? Uh, whoops, offense. So with um, with Sunder, uh, critical strike chance is 57.19%. Uh, that's what it's at. And chance to hit is 91%. And like, I'm telling you, this this amulet just it just makes it all work. Like, it, there's no... I, I, I couldn't make it work without it. I mean, as I said, you could maybe do it without. It is possible, I will not deny. But I, I threw this together very quickly. It is extremely fun build, but it is not. You are not going to tank through anything at all. Um, so let me just head over to. Uh, I'm going to just head over to. I guess Highgate into uh, the Dried Lake. I'm going to get all the charges up, and I'll see how how much the DPS goes up to. So just by itself, I mean with no auras, it's sixty-eight thousand uh, DPS. The deeps is pretty good actually, and then it goes up to ninety-seven thousand. Now some of the quirks about this, I'll actually just explain real quick. Uh, so the reason why this didn't work with uh, Sunder is because the you have to really read into the words, and if you don't read into the words, you're making a big mistake in this game. Uh, so it says ten percent chance to gain a power charge if you knock back an, an enemy back with melee damage. 
This means you have to actually hit them. That the, the damage has to be considered melee. Not with any kind of damage. It has to be melee damage. Wild Strike has two stages. Wild Strike has its melee hit, which is on one enemy. And on the second stage is like it's it's like projectile or AoE or chaining or something. And those are not counting as melee. They do not count as melee in the slightest. They're based upon melee damage, but they're not actually melee. Which sucks ass. It made the it made this useless because you need to hit a lot of enemies to maintain these power charges um, or to to gain them quickly. Uh, so that's why Wild Strike did not synergize with this staff at all. It was my bad. Um, I didn't think about it, but you know, whatever. Waste my own time. Um, yeah. So that's why Thunder Ground Slam and uh, whatever the third one was. I said. Um, uh, fucking, I don't know what it, what it was. Well, that's why those three were the best ones for this, uh, for this ability, uh, here. So, uh, so let's start getting, uh, some of this shit going. Uh, the other thing is, if you kill too fast, which is a problem, you are not generating power charges. You have to hit them more than one time. It's actually a weird problem to have, but you will lose power charges if you are too strong. Uh, I'm up to six. Uh, how many charges do I have up to, I think? I mean, the, the thing is, Leap Slam is actually a good way of uh, generating charges. You see, I just lost all my charges. I'm killing stuff. I am killing things, but I'm killing them too fast. So if we find like a, a nice blue pack, maybe it'll be better. I think I have seven charges. This is more of a mapping thing. I mean, like, I, I, like how could you possibly complain that you're killing things too fast? I mean, at that point, do the power charges matter? And the answer is yes, they do. It's for the... It's not six power charges. Oh, I may I may only have a maximum of six. So with all this stuff up, I'm uh, at uh, one, 170... Oh, there we go. 200, uh, basically 200,000 DPS. When it all gets going. Um, when I have every... Literally... Oh, I didn't even have Rallying Cry up, so it's actually even more than that. Um, so that should give you a good idea of the damage you're doing. It's... Oh, uh, here we go. We have a Breach here for a change. Alright, let me just uh, see. Oh, we do have seven. Okay, I, I now hit breach the 200,000 barrier. No, it's kind of going down again. Uh, yeah, it, it just it hovers around between 100 and 100 uh, and 200,000 kind of thing. It's kind of what it does. I I, I can't I can't predict all this um, all the time. It's, yeah, the totem has to be up too, for it to be even more, because I like attack speed. So that gives you a good idea of how much uh, damage you will be doing. So, uh, it's it's actually not bad. Um, as I said, it is extremely fragile. I don't know how I managed to make it so fragile, but it's like... Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, as I said, I used combs, and then the idea with my last couple points, because I'm level 78 right now, right? So I would get these two nodes, uh, and then I would get like maybe these two as well for some chaos, uh, some chaos and life resistance. Uh, yeah, life resistance. The node right there, and then after that, I seriously don't know because all I need is life. So I'd probably go into this stuff where you get like, well, no, no not leech, but um, I mean, there's some life here, but I already went into the thing where I cannot be stunned. So going up here is kind of pointless now. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. There's some life maybe around here somewhere. No, I already got that one. That's the problem I have. Um, I just can't figure out like where to get where to squeeze out more life in this tree. And I thought I did a lot of life to begin with. I mean, you can probably with some of these jewel sockets, you can probably get a bit more. I mean, I did do some here actually. There's seven percent more life right there. Uh, and there's another jewel socket here you can get. And another one right there. So that's actually what I would have probably done. I would have finished up all the life I could possibly get, and then I'd get the jewel sockets. And then if I maxed out my gear, probably I could sit at like 7 or 8k life, you know. Um, but as I said, uh, it's because of the Abyssus, everything really fucking hurts. So medical, uh, uh, melee critical strike multiplier is really nice, but not when it's 45% increased physical damage taken. Um, and my armor sits at, for defenses, uh, 33%. It's not even that high of armor. Um, I mean, I, I generate endurance charges, and I also, gener and I also do uh, a mortal call. Because of my, as I said, the synergy with the, 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 the crits and the endurance charges. So, I mean, this is actually a really nice combination uh, right here. But, you know, uh, I mean, it, you, you just have to survive the one melee uh, hit that could kill you. 
and that's and then you're I think you're you're I think you're solid. I mean, if you were doing this in hardcore, I would say maybe drop the abyssus. Uh, I mean, it's not. I mean, I kill things way fast, so you don't really need it. I mean, you saw me do a relatively high level map, and that that had enfeeble on it. So, uh, but I mean, the boss almost killed me because the bo that boss is actually really hurts a lot. So, uh, I mean, yeah. So that, that's how I would do it. It's a it's a pretty nice build. I would suggest it, uh, especially if the hegemonies remains to be fairly cheap. Uh, definitely go for it. And uh, that's all I have to say on that matter. So uh, thank you very much for watching, and uh, hope you uh, like the build. So take care. Goodbye.